Hello everyone, this video is on stress on the spiritual path and some people can get really frustrated and feel like they're not making progress or they've meditated for a certain amount of time and they're not getting results or they did all these techniques and then this happened in their life and why did it happen? It shouldn't have happened because I did those techniques and oh, I did connect to bliss, but now I'm de-stressing and the bliss has gone away. And why did I bother doing those anyway if I'm going to now be de-stressing? And so that's what this video is about. There can be a lot of misunderstandings when we start doing these practices that the personality believes is going to take away our misery and propel us into this higher state where we'll have no problems anymore. And this is the misunderstanding, the misunderstanding that these techniques are going to permanently make our life easier. And yes, they can. And I recommend that you do them because they are beautiful and they awaken a sleeping intelligence and they reconnect you with other beings and, 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 and. But they can also show us wounding. They can also show us things that we need to work on. And so that's the part that we don't want to sign up for. So on our spiritual path, we're like, I'll take the bliss, but I don't want to take a look at my childhood wounding. I just want to get the bliss and I, I don't want to go over here and deal with that. I want to do these techniques and I want to bypass all of that other stuff and I want to trust that these techniques and these meditation practices or whatever it might be are going to be all that I need. The devotion to this path, to this master, to these techniques is just going to solve all of my problems. It's like putting all of your eggs in one basket and not understanding that life is a process and life has a lot of ingredients. And one of the ingredients might be a devotion to a path, a spiritual path, to a, a teacher, a master, a guru, whatever it might be, to your chosen modality to connect with stillness. But once you touch on the stillness, the intelligence in the stillness will also start to dislodge all of the impediments. And if there's wounding in your past, if there's trauma that's unresolved, if there's any fear, it's going to rise up and say, here you go, you've got to deal with this. And then you might be like, no, I don't want to deal with it. I just want to meditate more. I just need to love my master more. I just need to love my spiritual path. And then you can get irritated with any dysregulation in the personality, any anxiety that arises, any confusion. And there is a misunderstanding that that is also part of your awakening. It's valuable. It's gold. If anxiety arises, it has information in it. If, if childhood wounding arises, there's information in it. You, you may need to get some help. Sometimes when we go on these spiritual paths, it's good to have qualified mental health practitioners to help you integrate the lessons you've learned in your spiritual practices into everyday life and, 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 and to, to use, if you have access to mental health professionals, to use them and to talk through it and to use scientifically based modalities as well as the other esoteric studies that we can do and contemplations we can do. And also there are scientifically researched 
meditation modalities. So as a therapist myself, I always suggest to clients choose one of the scientifically researched meditation techniques and then also do the talk therapy, do the other things. Make sure you're exercising, make sure your nutrition's in and your diet's good. It's a multi-modality approach because sometimes the stress on the spiritual path is because we're putting all of our eggs in one basket and we get very one-dimensional and very dogmatic and my way is the only way and I'm just going to stick at this and, and I'm not going to do anything else. And I understand where that comes from because if you're attached to a lineage and if you're doing a certain practice, you don't want to be jumping around. It's like if you dig a well, you dig, 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 and then you get to the water. You don't go digging loads of wells and loads of places. Or if you're having one foot in one boat and it's going at this speed and you have a another foot in another boat and it's going slower, you kind of get uh, 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 and then you fall over. So choose a practice that works, ideally a practice that you can effortlessly transcend, that's scientifically researched, and then add on the rest if that resonates or figure it out for yourself. But know that even if you do everything right and you have your therapist that's great and, and, and you have your meditation technique and that's working and your diet's great and you're exercising and your relationship's good. It doesn't mean that you're not going to experience stress because there is an unfathomable, unfathomable component to it where there's a collective stress and we don't know who gets given certain amounts of collective stress to dissolve. And if you've chosen a spiritual path, you might be given more to dissolve. And we don't know where one person begins and another one ends. We don't know whether this stress and anxiety belongs to us, whether it's transferred from elsewhere. We just don't know. But it's all a gift. It's all been given. And you're not given more than you can handle usually. So if you're stressed on your spiritual path, understand that it's not going to be perfect. The spiritual path isn't going to be perfect. It's going to have ups and downs. It might have some dysregulation, de-stressing, difficulty in the personality. Don't need to judge it. It's also a good thing to know about mood making on the spiritual path because that can be stressful. Some people, they desire these higher states of consciousness so much that they look at people who they perceive are in these higher states. What are they wearing? What are they doing? How are they sitting? And they will try and mimic those people in order to get the results. So well, if I go and I put a load of incense around and I sit cross-legged and I do some mudras, then maybe I can come into a higher state of consciousness. That doesn't really work. It will cause stress and anxiety and a feeling of being an imposter on a very subtle level. You don't need to do any of that. The hand mudras, they, they arise spontaneously. It's not like you do a hand mudra and then you're going to experience something. The hand mudras, they arise spontaneously. The desire to wear beads or to bow down to a master it arises spontaneously in certain individuals. It doesn't need to arise in every individual. Not everybody needs to sit cross-legged. Not everybody needs to have a specific master or guru that they bow down to. Not everybody needs to be doing the incense. Unless it comes from a very innocent space of devotion spontaneously and then they just can't help themselves. 
But if you're trying to get somewhere through copying behaviors, that's going to lead to stress and anxiety and slow you down, in fact, and we call it mood making. And certain cultures, they have a certain way of behaving and that's fine and, and great. But we don't need to behave in forced ways to awaken. You can awaken at any time. I've done another video on this. I said you can awaken when you're dyeing your shoelaces. You can awaken when you're ironing your clothes. If your ticket is up, your ticket is up. It doesn't matter if you don't even want to awaken and you're smoking a load of fags and you're down uh, at the local pub drinking a pint of beer and you want to have a fight afterwards. If your time is up, your time is up. And if your ticket is up, you're going to change. And then you might have somebody down the meditation center that's like trying to do hand mudras and doing a, a load of, of breathing techniques. But the guy down the pub suddenly like, boom, changes. So it doesn't really make sense fully. Some people just transform in an unexpected way. And I don't know why that is. Who knows? It's a mystery. But don't force anything. But if you do have a desire, a desire to go on a spiritual path, I suppose, and I've said this before, the easiest way is to find an effortless meditation practice that can reconnect you with yourself on a very fine level and all of the rest will just spontaneously occur and you won't have to make any effort or mood make or do anything and everything is just done for you.